builders, this is now the part two of our discussion on ministry in the new normal. And for this part two, I will tell you how I apply the principles. Those are facing the reality, sticking with the vision, and acting out for the opportunities that I mentioned in part one. But before that, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, open our hearts and open our minds as we learn how to be proactive rather than reactive to the changes that are happening around us. Lord Jesus, be our example. And thank you for letting us have this opportunity to just go into the presence of the Father and learn from His words. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen and Amen. Ministry in the New Normal, Stories and Reflection, Part 2 This video is a continuation of my talk last time. In this video, I will talk to you how I applied the three principles that I discussed in the first video with two of our ministry modes, and those are small group ministry and church. Let's jump right into it. Small group ministry. The reality of our new normal today is that we cannot do the traditional means that we have done before. That is hiking outside and also hosting Christmas parties just like this one. And if I may say, that was really frustrating. And not being able to do the things that you usually do gives you some sense of hopelessness but then after really thinking through the reality the next step that i did that we did me and my wife did was to really rethink our vision why are we doing these methods why are we applying these strategies why are we gathering young professionals to go mountain hiking to have fellowship in our house and serve them with hospitality. We always go back to the vision that God has given us. To glorify God by helping leaders listen, obey, and love the Lord through Bible teaching and life-to-life -life discipleship. And when I had the time to really digest the reality that is before me and go back to the vision that God has given us, it helps you understand what are the methods and what are the principles. And now that these methods are not available to you in this new normal, how can you change or how can you look for opportunities that will still do the vision given the situation? So, knowing that our well-loved methods won't work during this new normal, we shifted our strategy to online opportunities. Now, we are doing online counseling, online coaching, and online biblical studies. Once again, my dear friends, what I want you to learn from this talk is not just to react to what just happened, but be able to respond and really evaluate what in your ministry can be changed and let me repeat that strategies and methods can be changed but stick to the vision and being clear with what god wants you to do will enable you to look at what's available and be creative in responding rather than reacting to the situation and you see when we explored this opportunity to go online, we also saw God's blessing. Why? Because doing online counseling, coaching, and biblical studies, these methods are not limited to geographic locations. These methods can reach more in terms of time to meeting ratio. Why? In one sitting, I can meet eight guys. 
as compared to when I go to their place or when they come to my place, we have to really set up the house, cook for them, take care for them. Not that that old method is bad, but now we can see clearly what are the things that we need to maintain that is to help to help leaders like these young professionals to really seek God listen to him obey him and fall in love with him so at this point I'd like you to pause this video and ask yourself what is my vision what are the things that can be changed and what are the things that I must hold on to and during these times one of the temptations that um, I encountered as we went about going through the opportunities of going online is to surrender some of the aspects of this vision for example life to life discipleship it is much easier to be fake in front of the screen and also this challenge of really going through Bible teaching. You see, my dear friends, it really took a lot of research and also time for me to employ how can I do Bible teaching in this online platform? Because when you look around you, there are many ministries that are online right now, but then I felt that Bible teaching is not one of the primary things that are out there so it is sometimes tempting to just copy what they were doing but then I know that I'm called for Bible teaching and through that help these people to really know God seek him obey him and fall deeply in love with him so my dear friends again respond not react face the reality stick to the vision and look for opportunities in my second example for our church this is kind of unique for our experience once again we face the reality that in this new normal particularly having to deal with community quarantines large gatherings such as these cannot be done so once again, the initial reaction was to go online, which all, we also did, and also to have Facebook Live, uh, Zoom meetings. But then, once again, I have to step back and really go through the vision that we have for our church. And just like last time, when I explained to you that my vision, my personal vision, actually came from this text in Deuteronomy chapter 6, which says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. One of the things that I went back to here is the principle here is to teach each generation about God's word. And the strategy or the method by the Israelites is through the teaching of the parents. We can also see that in the New Testament, in the earliest church, wherein you have house churches. And when Paul greets the churches, he starts by greeting the head of the houses or the fathers. So from there, we derived our strategy. That is to really invest in training the fathers to lead reading God's word, prayer, and communion. The way we responded to discipleship in this new normal is by, how may I say this, downsizing our church. That is to really 
spend time in training our fathers and help them hold house churches for their families. You see, this um, response to the new normal came uh, was being built long before the new normal happened because as we continue to follow God's vision for our church, that is to empower fathers to lead spiritually for their homes, it was a blessing that in the new normal, the families in our church are ready to take on the responsibility. The fathers in our church, the leaders in our church, are ready to take on that God-given mandate that they should lead their families for discipleship. So you see, my dear friends, what was before the new normal back then a program to promote what God wants for families became the backbone or the survival strategy. But not only survival, but thriving strategy for our church. That is localized discipleships led by fathers. So in conclusion, what I want you to take from these stories from me, I don't want you to just copy the strategies that we employed, like the online discipleship or family discipleships, but I want you to really look at the reality around you. How have you equipped your disciples, your fathers in the church, for instance, and what is the vision? And my dear friends, this is something that is hard for us sometimes to let go of some methods and strategies because we have been doing them for the longest time. That's why we are not able to be flexible. Then, once again, what should be a staple, if I might say? What should be a structure? What should be non-negotiable in your ministry is the vision what God want you to do and let your methods and structures and even strategies be flexible as a response once again to the situation in line with the vision rather than a reaction to what others are doing a reaction to the situation around you a reaction to your feelings but let your ministry for the new normal a response rather than the reaction so in conclusion i hope you go through a process of examining your ministry by looking at its reality going back to your vision and seeking new opportunities to carry out your god-given vision in this new normal and as I end, let me pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you give students of this course time to just really face the reality and think about how old measures, old methods, old strategies are not working right now and just offer them up to you. And Lord, remind them of the vision that is the source for these strategies, Lord God. And may they go back to that vision. And through that, let creativity for finding opportunities flow. Lord, I pray for the students that they not be reactive to what's happening around them, but rather respond anew to the vision that you have given them. Thank you so much, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.